So this video is about SERDs, which is part of your GCSE maths syllabus and even part of the A-level math syllabus. And what are SERDs? Basically, they're just about messing around with square roots. So let's show you how to mess around with square roots. Here are the three rules for SERDs. In fact, one of them is just for indices, but we'll get back to that. First of all, if you square root something and then square it, you're going to end up with the number you started with. So if you have an x, you square root and square root, you end up with x again. And this is just another way of saying that, which is a very common way of saying it in thirds. Um, so if that's confusing for you, let's just look at an example with numbers. If you square root 3 and then you square it, you're going to get that's what it is and square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just another way of saying square root of 3 squared now I don't like to say square root over and over the short way of saying it is root root 3 instead of square root 3 so I'm gonna start saying stuff like that root 10 times root 10 is equal to 10 it's just just based on that same principle let's say that's the same as saying root 10 squared um, what else do I have to say about this um, let's go on to the next one this looks a bit confusing for somebody who's not that comfortable with algebra this is supposed to be really like a single number if a single number has a can be is a product of two other numbers like x and y then you can break that single square root into two other square roots let's just go for the example say you got square root of 20 that can be made into or equals to square root of 4 times square root of 5 and that is because 4 times 5 is equal to 20 I could have also done root 2 times root 10 because that 2 times 10 also equals 20 so as long as the product of the two numbers in the square roots is equal to the product of the is equal to the original number in the square root you're fine. Okay, let's simplify this. Root 4 is equal to 2. Root 5 can't be simplified. So 2 times root 5, that's what we've got so far. But as in a lot of maths, we try to get rid of the time symbol just to make it a tiny bit shorter. So instead of writing 2 times root 5, you just write 2 root 5, and that's the typical way you're expected to write it. Okay, you're not really supposed to write it like that. And uh, so this is just the reverse of this thing over here. So instead of doing, instead of breaking a square root into two more square roots, or you can even break it into more square roots if you wanted to, as long as the numbers multiply uh, to the original number, you can break it into more square roots. So anyway, I'm just doing the reverse. So I'm take, turning, taking two square roots, timesing them together, and it makes one big square root. 3 times 6 is 18, that's why I chose 18. Now I've made a point here that generally what you're supposed to do is when you're breaking into more square roots, one of the numbers should be a square root. So for example, I could have done square root of 2 times square root of 10, but neither 2 nor 10 are square numbers. That's why I chose 4, okay, which means I had to choose 5, because 4 times 5 makes 20, and 4 is a square number, and the reason why I want that why I want a square number and square, re square rooting a square number is so that I can simplify it. Okay, so we, you tend to pick square numbers as factors of the original number when you're breaking it down into two more, two or more square roots. Okay, now this bit here is really an indice rule, but I'll just put it here anyway because it's useful and it's got a square root. If you've got square root of a whole number, you can break it down into two separate square roots uh, just like this if you've got square root of 9 over 4 that equals square root of 9 over square root of 4 which obviously simplifies to 3 over 2 so those are the rules that you need to know here are some useful facts for this topic so you can understand what's going on in the next bit which is a very common thing you have to do so rational and irrational numbers basically irrational numbers are to do with square roots because a lot of square root of things turn out to be irrational numbers. Let's start with a rational number. Rational numbers are just numbers, most numbers basically, and 
the proper definition is a number that can be written as a fraction. So if x is rational, then it can be written as a fraction. Just for example, 5 is rational because it can be written as 5 over 1. That's that. But the real interesting bit is irrational numbers. Okay, Irrational numbers can't be written as fractions. Okay, where A over B are, you know, whole numbers, a proper fraction, okay? Um, but the way I like to really describe it, rather than the formal def definition, I like to say irrational numbers are horrible numbers, okay? They just go on for infinite number of decimal places and don't have any particular pattern. You can't say what's going to be the next decimal number. Like, you know, when you have recurring numbers, you have 0 0.33333, at least you know there's a pattern, or 353535. These numbers, including pi, which is also an irrational number, these numbers don't have any pattern, they just go on forever with infinite number of decimal places, so they're just horrible numbers, and according to the definition, they cannot be written as a fraction. Like recurring numbers, they go on forever, but at least they can be written as a fraction, like one third, or two thirds, or one fifth, whatever. So anyway, we've got irrational numbers covered now, let's talk about rationalizing the denominator. If you've forgotten, the denominator is the bottom bit of a fraction. And rationalizing means turning an irrational number into a rational number. In short, it means making the bottom bit of the fraction not a square root, getting rid of the square root from the bottom bit of a fraction. And you do that not just by changing the number, by, by making a similar fraction. And how do you make a similar fraction that doesn't have a square root? Well, how do you make a similar fraction? Generally, you times the top and bottom by the same number. Now, how do you pick the same number? Very easy. You, if you've got the square root of something there, you times the top and bottom by the square root of that same thing. For example, if you've got the square root of x on the bottom, you times the top and bottom by the square root of x. Let's do an example with numbers. Um, if you've got 5 over root 2, just times top and bottom by root 2. So 5 times root 2 is 5 root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2, according to that rule we had right in the beginning, which is that root 2 times root 2 equals 2. Okay, so I'll just scroll back up and just remind you. What have I got over here? Yeah, that's what I said over here. Basically, rationalizing the denominator means getting rid of the square root from the bottom of a fraction. Harder examples don't really come up unless you're doing your A levels, okay, but they do sometimes come up, so let's quickly do it. If you've got um, A over X minus Y, then times top and bottom by X plus Y, and that would take advantage of the difference of two squares. Now you might be thinking, there are no square roots here, how can this be anything to do with thirds? Well, it's just because um, in the actual example, you can put the square roots in different places. Uh, this is just demonstrating that, or how the principle works. It's just demonstrating how the difference of two squares works in this example. So let's just go for an example. You've got 3 over 7 minus root 5. Because we want to use a difference of two squares, that's like your a, that's like your minus b. We're going to times by the opposite. We're going to do a plus b. Yeah, this is the difference of two squares. A minus b times a plus b gives you a squared minus b squared. And you'll see how that's useful in a minute. So we times by the opposite. So if that's a minus, you use a plus. Okay, so you times top and bottom by uh, 7 plus root 5. And what do you get? You get 3 times 7 plus root 5 is 3 times 7, root five, 7 plus root 5 in a bracket. But when you do 7 minus root 5 times 7 plus root 5, and you you end up using this thing here, and 7 times, uh, basically you get 7 squared minus root 5 squared, which is 49 minus 5. So that's that example done. Let's do another example to demonstrate um, how this can be used. This time I put a square root on both of them. That's why I didn't put a square root on any particular place in this example, because the square root can go in all sorts of places. So. We've got s root 6 plus root 2. So that means we're going to times it by root 6 minus root 2, because we have to do the opposite. a minus b times a plus b is the same as a plus b times a minus b. So it doesn't matter if you start off with a plus and you end up with a minus, as long as you do the opposite. So we times uh, by the opposite, and then you 
because of the difference of 2 squares, you get root 6 squared minus root 2 squared, which is basically 6 minus 2, which is 4, but I didn't want to simplify it. You can simplify it yourself. Okay, and finally, simplifying thirds. This is really simple. If you've got 3 root 7 plus uh, 5 root 7 take away 2 root 7, that's just 6 root 7 because you've got 3 plus 5 take away 2. Yeah, so 3 plus 5 is 8, take away 2 is 6. It's just like 3x plus 5x minus 2x is 6x, where x is like a square root. Of course, you don't have to have a root 7 there. You could have root something else, as long as these are all the same square roots. And finally, if you have to multiply out uh, things with square roots in it, there's nothing special going on. It's just like this example. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times... 3 root 2 is 6 root 2, 2 times 3 root 2 is 2 times 3, 6 times root 2 is 6 root 2. Uh, minus root 2 times 4 is obviously minus 4 root 2, it's just another way of writing it. And minus root 2 times 3 root 2 is, well, that minus can just go in the front, and root 2 times root 2 is 2, so you end up with, instead of saying, well, basically you end up with minus 3 times 2 yeah because you have to times by that 3 as well and then we can simplify like we did above uh, 8 minus 6 basically 3 times 2 is 6 so 8 minus 6 is 2 6 root 2 minus 4 root 2 well 6 minus 4 is 2 so you've got 2 root 2's and that's it hope that was useful